Okay guys, so right now I'm gonna teach you how to make this uh, very cool material and you can see that Yeah, it just lays snow on top of everything and you can literally use this on any model you want And it's a great way to fill up your scene with multiple objects with just one yeah edit to your material and not only is this Let's say on top of it. We can even rotate our models and it will stay on top even then right as you can see so it doesn't matter where the snow will always be laying on top very very powerful so right now this is in Eevee and as you can see it works in Eevee very very great but the I think the real strength comes through in cycles and that is because we can also apply some displacement to it it also does it in Eevee but we all know that cycles is a little bit better in creating bigger scenes Right now we're in cycles and if you look at this orange line, you can see where our normal rock is without the displacement. And you can clearly see that the snow lays higher than it, right? So this is being displaced. You can also see it in our textures, which are shown here. Uh, this looks like a lot. Uh, it is not, trust me. We will go uh, right through it. but. Even here, if I rotate it, you can see that the snow just keeps laying on top, which is um, awesome. So let's go a little bit into the material. Uh, later on, we'll go into much more detail, but uh, I will just show you first. So what essentially happens is these few nodes make sure the snow keeps laying on top. And it's always just on the top of the normals. Then we have two different materials here. So it's a little bit messy. We will make it a little bit cleaner. But essentially, these here is one material and this is another material. This will be the snow and this is the rock material. And this little part here is the displacement. And they are all mixed together. And then we get this result. So let's go a little bit more into detail. And we're going to make clean it up a little bit. This is uh, just messy because I tried a lot of stuff. Yeah, so let's start the tutorial. Okay. So I will just show you first on how we do this on a sphere. So let's jump in here and make this a shade editor. And I'm just going to get rid of the principal shader for right now. Because I first just want to show you how this works. I want to make this cube a sphere. So I'm just going to give this some subdivision surface. And why do I do this with a cube? Well. Um, displacements work the best with quads as we can see and right now it will all stay in quads okay so if you have a UV sphere we can clearly see that these are not quads and they will give us a few artifacts which we do not want I'm gonna give this a smooth shading and I will just add a diffuse shader and this is gonna show us where our snow will be Okay, so as I already said, the snow will be generated from the normals. You can do this with a UV coordinate or a geometry node. Both the geometry and the texture coordinate have a normal node in here. We're gonna separate these with an X, Y, Z. Okay, so right now let's just use the geometry. And we choose the normal and it goes into the factor of the separate X, Y, Z. So let's put the normal first in the diffuse. And you can see that we have all these colors here. But if we actually separate it and we do the Z axis, now we can see that we have this. And the snow will essentially be laying on top and the other material will be on the bottom, which is this is just a mask. Right, a black and white mask. I like to control this with a color ramp. So if you put a color ramp in between here, we can actually move these values around, right? So where do we want the snow? Do we want it to lay a bit higher? Or uh, do we want it a bit more sharp on the top or have some more displacement? So this is kind of the base. And I also like to put a gamma node in here. 
And what this does, it essentially just smooths it out even a little bit more. It just does a little bit of a better job than the color ramp that we have. This is a little bit dependent on what model you have. So on the sphere, uh, the snow on top here would look weird and you would probably make it a little bit more sharp and a little bit more high. But the normals of a rock are a little bit different. So this would, for instance, already work very good with the normals of a rock. Let's add a displacement. So you can see here in our material output that we can put a displacement in here. So we can just add a node which is called displacement. And we can put this purple dot into the purple dot of the material output. Um, I personally did a very, very easy displacement, which is just going to be a noise texture. I also like to control this noise texture with a color ramp, but let's look at the noise texture first. So I'm going to put the fact of the noise texture into the color of the diffuse. So here we can see how our noise texture works. So now you can change the amount that you want it to scale or not. But I think right now this looks kind of cool. We can always use a color ramp in here to also change these values, right? So if you want it more deep or if you want some parts to be uh, more high, you can see that you can change these values, right? So this would essentially be our displacement. As we, if we put this color into the height, then we can see a displacement. But if we go into our rendered version here, and even into cycles, then we can see that this is not a real displacement. There's no real displacement happening. And that is because we have to go here into a material tab and go into settings. And here we have bump only. We actually want displacement and bump. And now you can see some real displacement happening. So. The amount of subdivisions is very important in here. So you know this is a little bit heavy on your computer, but uh, this for sure needs to be a little bit higher if you want some real uh, details. So this bump is a little bit too much for us right now. You can change this at two ways. I personally like to put this scale a little bit lower, uh, but you can also play around with these values here. But we do not want everything to displace. We only want our snow to displace. So how do we make it displace only on the snow? Well, we can actually just add a mix RGB, put it in between here, and put the gamma into the fac of the mix node. So now we can see that only the top, which is the snow, will be changed. This color is gonna be black, but now we can see that yeah, it's way too small, right? That is why this mid level needs to be at zero. And now we have our normal size of, of our circle and the snow will be expanded from it because it lays on top. So here we can still play with our scale and let's put the gamma into our color and we can see that our snow is white and then here the black, we can add another material. So now, if we rotate our circle, you can see that everything moves with it. There is only one problem, and that is our displacement does not move here. The only thing that you have to do is click on Ctrl A and just apply your location, rotation, or skill. I just do rotation, and now it's uh, at the place that we want it to be. So you can literally just rotate it around forever you want, Ctrl A, and just click on rotate. And our displacement will be in the right spot. Very, very, very cool, and I also think it's very powerful. So let's go a little bit more into depth into these materials. What I like to do to make this a bit more clean, I like to join these together with Ctrl J and here we have a frame and you can change here the frame nodes. Okay, so the label would be snow direction. So with this, we just uh, can change the direction and the fall off of the snow. We can even give this a color if we want and let's do it blue. Very, very cool. This is the displacement of the snow. So we can join these, Ctrl J, and then snow displace. 
and we can make this green. It's time for us to add the snow material, which is gonna be a principal shader. And I want to only focus on that right now, so I'm gonna add the delete our diffuse and just apply this into the surface. And here we can play around with these values. So I already made this snow material before. Uh, subdivision surface should be a little bit on. I'm gonna put it at 0.3. Specular, all the way at one. Roughness is gonna be a bit more, so 0.8. And which essentially makes it look really realistic is some of these splotches on here which are a little bit more bright so um, i will do that with a texture coordinate node mapping generated goes into the factor and we're going to add a noise texture Let's put the fact into the base colors just so we can see what's gonna happen. And right now there's not a lot happening, so let's put this a little bit more up. Uh, let's do the 500, it's actually a lot up. And we still can see anything, so I'm gonna put a brightness and contrast node in here. Let's put this to minus two, contrast to eight, and put another brightness and contrast in here and put this to 10 and this brightness to zero. So what we can see right now is these little dots of uh, brightness, right? And if we put this into our clear coat, this will actually shine for us and give us some um, yeah, more realistic snow. It of course also looks bad because we do not have an, because we do not have realistic lighting in here. So we can get a world map in here. So we can go into our world setting and add an environment texture node. Environment texture, color goes into color. We're gonna choose the snowy park and you can get this environment texture down below. Right now we already have a little bit more better lighting. I do not want to be distracted by our background which is super bright and light. So I'm going into here, our render settings and put this film to transparent. And what I personally also like to do is delete this light and create a sun lamp. Move it against us so we can actually see those little dots. And of course use nodes and we can put this uh, to whatever strength we want. So two might be good. I also like to give the world map a little bit lower, so 0.3, so we have some more shadows in here. And right now we're getting a very realistic uh, snow material. Very, very cool. Let's go back into our object. And you can, by the way, also do, the, instead of the brightness and contrast nodes, you can do, use a color ramp. But let's grab all of these, move them here. Control J, and this is gonna be our snow. Right, and let's make it, let's give it a color and we're gonna keep it nice and uh, bright. Now I'm gonna put the snow direction here. Snow underneath and the snow displacement will stay below here. So for the other material you can literally choose whatever you want, but let's use some bricks for right now. So I'm gonna add another principal shader, principal shader. And here we're going to use an image texture. And I'm just going to use these bricks. So uh, you can also get them down below. This brick. And right now we can't really see it. And that's because we need to use a mix shader. In between these two materials. And, and the fun, fun thing about the snow direction. We can also use this as a mask for our materials. They need to be switched around, so I'm just going to switch these two shaders. And here we have our snow on top of our 
stones and you can see that it doesn't really work perfectly right now but that is just because we need to uh, tweak some values later on let's go a little bit more into depth into this material here i'm going to use a another texture coordinate and a mapping node and i'll just do the object i think object into the mapping and vector into the vector that looks a little bit weird let's try the uvs um yeah let's just keep it at uv uh let's put the scale up and we can add some other nodes like a normal map with uh, another image texture we're gonna open the normal map of course for the normal map we need a normal map node in between here and use the same mapping node so here we can essentially also do the roughness the specular but let's uh, just focus on the snow for right now. So I'm going to join these, Control J, and name this brick. We can change the color if we like to do a little bit more bricks color. And let's go into our viewport shading. And now it's time for us to tweak some stuff. So, as I already said, you can tweak it in here, into our color ramp. You can see that we don't get to see those uh, weird bricks underneath. But we of course can also go into here, into our noise textures. And change the scale value of uh, this here. Or even play around with the color ramp. So, as I already said before, with spherical objects, it's a little bit different because the normals are, like, we have a very smooth fall off. But let's add a cube in here, and we're going to give this the same material. And now we can see that, uh, yeah, the snow lays on top, which looks... already a little bit better but the displacement of course doesn't really work because there are no subdivisions in here so if we give this some subdivisions it will automatically become a circle like we had before but if we're actually gonna subdivide this manually then we have some bricks with some snow laying on top and you can of course um, give this as much uh, subdivisions as you want make sure you give the smooth shading and here we have snow on top of that and as you guys can see this is literally the same method that i used for this rock uh instead of bricks i of course used a rock texture and yeah the only thing is um rendering right now so just grab your camera rotate your model to whatever rotation you want to Ctrl A and apply the rotation and then just start your render. And as you can see you will finally end up with a result like this. And here you can see that we have those little yeah, splotches what I was talking about. You can see them better in the render. They just make it look uh, way more realistic. And the snow is actually laying on top. And the snow itself has a displacement which is just the displacement that we gave it. So very very cool and um yeah enjoy so i hope you guys learned a lot from this and i will see you guys in the next one